Namo Puthai, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing my learnings from Middle Discourses 103. Is this what you think of me? Also known as Kinti Sutta. And uh, uh, so, in this, this is an interesting discourse where this is mostly targeted towards uh, Bitha's teaching was towards mendicants. Uh, but we can also, you know, take away some of the teachings, right? Uh, uh, what is given in this discourse. This discourse is basically, you know, how to handle when, you know, there are disputes with respect to what Buddha said. Like, for, for example, Buddha gave a teaching and there are so many mendicants. So everyone will interpret Buddha's teachings in a certain way. And there may be dispute between the mendicants. So Buddha was very, very, always very uh, clear on this one thing that we should... Mendicants should have harmony between themselves. Only then they, they can study together, right? And and together they can achieve enlightenment, right? Uh, so, Buddha said that you have to maintain the harmony. And Buddha has prescribed specific situations. What to do in what situation? So, this is more towards mendicants, uh, but still it has takeaways for us. So, I just read the discourse. So, basically, say, Buddha says, in the starting there is something uh, else that is coming up. Buddha says, Mendicants, what do you think of me? Ascetic Gautama teaches the Dhamma for the sake of robes, arms, food, lodging or rebirth in this or that state. So Mendicants said, no sir, we don't think that way. That you only teach us for robes and everything and rebirth and all. No. So, if you don't think of me in that way, then what exactly do you think of me? So, the Mendicants said, sir, we think of you in this way. The Buddha is compassionate and wants what, what's best for us. He teaches out of compassion. And this is going back to the, the day when Buddha got enlightened. He, when he got the, uh, the, the, the learning, he, he didn't want to teach. Because somewhere he knew that this learning, I myself have got after so much effort. And there are people who are sleeping. How will they benefit from it? Then Brahma, Brahma Sahapati, he came and said that, no, there are people who have, who then from the eyes of the Brahma, Buddha surveyed the world and he saw people who are suffering so much. And Brahma told him that there are people who are who have little dust in their eyes. They are not fully awakened, but they are also not fully slept. And there are ears that can understand. So Buddha said, okay, I am ready to teach. And this is how Buddha, Buddha teaches out of compassion towards all beings. So Buddha says, in that case, each and every one of you should train in the things I have taught from my direct knowledge. That is, Four kinds of mindfulness meditation, which is Middle Discourses 10. The, the most important discourse uh, in the entire Buddha's teachings, MN10. Uh, you can uh, search for MN10, Satipatthana Sutta, in, in the uh, search bar on this channel and you will get the discourse. Highly advised to take a printout of that discourse. The link will be there in the description. Read the discourse. This is, if you are a Buddha student, you have to master this discourse not only in terms of kind of understanding but also in your daily life so uh, uh, four kinds of mindfulness meditation four four right efforts four bases of psychic power five faculties five powers seven awakening factors and the noble eightfold path so this was like buddha's teaching basically noble eightfold path is like the one thing that you know we need to take care right speech right action right livelihood right effort right mindfulness right concentration right understanding and right view so this is like the eight kind of paths, which is the kind of the path that Buddha has given. You should train in these things in harmony, appreciating other without quarreling. And then Buddha said, it may happen that as you practice, there are two mendicants, they may disagree on the teaching. And that's perfectly fine. Disagreements. But how to handle those disagreements? How to resolve the conflict? Because the conflict can blow up. Like it happened in a few times in Buddha's two, two mendicants. It blew, blew, blew and people, you know, Mendicants take, took sides and, you know, it then became ego issues. So, Buddha had to even deal with that. So, Buddha said, uh, suppose there are some disagreement on a particular discourse on the meaning and phrasing. Then Buddha said that first you decide what discourse, what difference dispute is all about. Is it on the meaning? Is it on the phrasing? Right? So, you have to first be comfortable on that. Please be clear on what is the exact discourse. Then one mendicant who should reach the mendicant of the other side who is most amenable and then go and talk and, and, and agree on this fact that on what is the dispute. 
don't dispute on this fact right that means at least first get a clock proper clarity on what the disagreement sometimes the disagreement may be because both of the other men, two mendicants have not even spoken about a certain thing may not have got a clarity on what the disagreement is so buddha says first get a dis disagreement clarified what the disagreement is on and buddha has given various situations either it's only the phrasing either it's only the meaning or, or it's both the phrasing and the meaning then when you do do this when you are get when you both agree on the exact nature of the dispute then you should remember what has been incorrectly memorized as incorrectly memorized and what has been correctly memorized as correctly memorized remembering this you should speak on the teaching and training this is what buddha said so first get a clarity on what the dispute is all about then go back to the teachings then consult maybe the senior monks and know what any of the parties has incorrectly kind of uh, understood then uh, buddha talks about harmony uh, sorry uh, offense done by any of the mendicants that means as you train in harmony appreciating each other without quarreling one of the mendicants might commit an offense or transgression right now if you see the vinaya the monastic code that clearly lays down the kind of uh, the, the 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 redressal measures in case some some offense some offenses which are like murder or you know um, rape or something or sexual relations they have like you are expelled from the sangha there are other offenses which you can just confess so there is a monastic code maybe this uh, sutta was before laying down that full monastic code i am not aware of that but here buddha is giving certain directions that as you train in harmony appreciating each other without quarreling some of the mendicants may commit an offense in that case you should not be in a hurry to accuse them individual should be examined that means in this situation if you want to correct the other person first you examine whether you will be troubled whether the other person will be hurt whether they hold fast their views or not sometimes the mendicant you know who has made the offense is holding on her views and fourth can you draw him from the unskillful and establish in the skillful so buddha basically wanted if someone has made a mistake the other person to go and speak to him and resolve the issue bring him from the unskillful to the skillful however buddha has given various scenarios what are the scenarios whether you yourself will be troubled whether the mendicant who has made the offense will be hurt whether the mendicant who has made the offense is holding fast to his view and fourth is whether you see that you will be able to move him from the skillful to the unskillful now in all the situations buddha says in all the situations maybe a situation where you will be troubled the mendicant is will be hurt mendicant will be hurt right and the mendicant is holding fast to his views and but still you feel that you will be able to kind of transform him from skillful to uns from unskillful to skillful you should go and speak only one situation where buddha says but suppose you think i'll be troubled an individual will, other individual will be hurt for they are irritable and hostile they hold fast to their views refusing to let go i cannot draw them away from the unskillful and establishment establishment in the skillful in that case buddha says don't underestimate the value of equanimity for that person that means in that case just be equanimous do not then reach out to that person just have that equanimity so this thing we can also you know kind of follow it in our day to day uh, conduct not only in terms of the teachings and all but sometimes you should try and reach out to the other person and help him even if he holds particular view he holds to his heart and he might get hurt if you know that he can come back to the from the unskillful qualities to the skillful qualities but in a rare case you just know from where then that you will not be able to turn him then maybe you should have equanimity then you should not touch that person right because then there is no point then you should practice equanimity right so that was coming out then then there is this thing that uh, mutual tail bearing that means if there is a disagreement then you know there are like tails that some he is see he said me to me like this and you know both the mendicants will go into their respective groups and start telling stories so buddha said that uh, if some 
if something like this happens, they should think that what if the ascetic knows about it? That means what if the Buddha knows about it? Would he rebuke it? The answer will be definitely yes. Answering rightly, the mendicant could, would say, yes, reverend, he would. But without giving that up, reverend, can one re realize extinguishment? That means, Buddha said, do not make stories. Right? If you make stories, you have to realize that you have to give up making these stories and everything. Because giving up, this is one example that you need to give up. Only then can you realize extinguishment. And then you should give up making stories and all. So, tail-bearing also, Buddha said, that you uh, should not do. Right? That is one more thing that is coming out. So this was Kinti Sutta. I hope something was of value. Uh, this is not exactly related to uh, the lay people, but something we can draw it, draw from this. The link to the discourse is given in the description. Please do share your insights and thoughts in the comment section. Thank you for watching this video. Namo Buddhaya.